Come on in. Let me cut my TV on, in which it may have Meg the Stallion twerking on it, but the TV will be on just to have something to look up at while I'm talking to my peoples. You know what I'm saying? I just want y'all to admire the blue flame before it grows and swipes across the screen. I just want y'all to appreciate the blue flame as it grows and swipes across the screen. Oh, man, listen, bro. I like to be honest with y'all. I like to be transparent with y'all. I don't like to sugarcoat things with y'all because we've built this uh, foundation on 
honesty. You know what I mean? We don't like to fool around with the mess and the tomfoolery. And the, you know what I mean? We don't do too much of that here. So let me just take this time to be incredibly honest with you all. We almost ain't get this live stream today. Like just. Oh, goodness, man. You know, I woke up this morning with all intentions of doing a live stream and a Patreon drop today. Because I told y'all that today we're going to have a live stream and a Patreon drop. Right? Like yesterday when I said it, what I said was tomorrow, but tomorrow's today. So what I'm saying is today I promised y'all a live stream and a Patreon drop, right? So I was like, man, this is what we're going to do, man. I'm going to get up. Go through my little morning routine. I wake up with an attitude, so it's gonna take me a little while to get on track and all that. You know, what I mean? I'm gonna drink my water. I'm gonna get dressed to go to the gym, get my look to the dojo in particular, get my little workout in, and I'm gonna come home and do this live stream. I planned on doing the live stream at two o'clock because I was done working out by one. <laughs> It's three central. <laughs> it's three central. I had to drag myself here to the chair and set up the camera and cut Meg the Stallion twerking on TV. I had to do all this just to, you know what I mean, prepare myself for the work that we have planned today. You all will indeed get your work today. I just need y'all to understand since we come from this place of transparency that, boy, I'm so tired that this shit almost didn't happen but it will um so what we're gonna do today um let me get that out the way there let me get that out the way there shots out to my guy kd kd beats and all that we're just gonna put that up we're just gonna put this on low while we talking okay we're just gonna put this on low while we talking so what we have planned today is um you know we're still in our phase of you know, watching prospects and figuring prospects out. You know, this was an approach that I took last year, opposed to going from player one to player 250, wherever we end up being in um, April or whatever, or just whenever we end up stop watching film. What I what I rather do is take these groups, take a take a group position group, right? and kind of grind that down, but then cut it with, you know, whatever. So I've been doing edges, edges, right? So I've broken my edges down into like three groups or whatever, you know, the first couple guys will watch. So I'll watch Aiden, I'll watch Kayvon, I'll watch Jermaine, and then I'll cut that with some offensive line. You know what I mean? And then I'll, I'll watch like Carl Loftus, Majai Sanders, some of the senior bowl kids, and I'll cut that with some D tackle film. So that's just kind of how we've been, how we've been operating, right? Um, before we get into that, so let me, let me, let me say this in silencio before we get going. So I'm just watching, you know what I mean? Some of the, some of the, some of the edge guys, right? And this is what I figured out from the edge guys. And we're also going to do like position rankings later on from PFF just to kind of make our notes and shit. But this is what I learned about the edge guys. There's the top of the list which is heavy than a mug. It's about four guys where it's like heavy than a mug. There's the middle of the list where it's like two people and they may be like second round dudes. But then it's like the bottom of the list where it's like 40 people and they all look like day three guys to me. You know? So at the top of the list is Aiden and then Carl Loftus. <laughs> Then Ojabo, <laughs> you can you can sprinkle a, sprinkle a little bit of Thibodeau in there, and then you got then you got a little bit of space. You know what I mean? You can put whoever you want to in this second little category, but it ain't many people in this second little category. You know, some people put Jermaine Johnson in the in the, in the first. I think that's weird, but you could do what you want. I put Jermaine Johnson in this middle ca category by himself. And I'm leaving a, a couple of spaces in this middle category because I might like somebody. If you want to put Logan Hall there, then, you know, as a day two dude, then fine. If that's what you want to do. But, boy, I just started watching people. 
And it just looked like all the edges going to be like fourth round guys to me. Four, fifth, sixth round guys. That's just how they look. Majai, Arnold, Drake, uh, Kingsley. They just, uh, they just all looking like day three guys to me. I, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to find... I'm trying to find the impressive one out the bunch. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm not going to be on edges too, 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 too long because uh, we run out of uh, February time, and I would like to get in some of the uh, top receivers and uh, top you know, corners and safeties before we get into March. And then March is really where we grind before we get to April. But, boy, I'm just watching defensive ends, man. I feel like it's the opposite of what it was last year, right? I feel like a lot of – this is one of my observations, right? I feel like a lot of the defensive ends that we watched last year, we was looking at them like, all right, so like y'all raw, but y'all got pass rush ability. Y'all can clean up some of this run stuff, but at least y'all can rush the passer. So y'all got some like day two value. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all got a little bit of value in my mind. You know what I'm saying? I watched these guys. And, and it's a bunch of stand-up slim guys that's good versus the run, but they somehow only want to run down the middle of people. So weird, you know? Then we got the other guys like DeMarvin Leal that lines up at end, but he should be a three-tech, but I don't know what to do with him. Then there's the other guys like Logan Hall who lines up there sometimes, but he should be full-time three-tech also. I think that's what we do with him. Then you guys like got guys like Cam Thompson, Cam Thomas, Thomas from San Diego State. They line him up at the edge and he's cool. But then they line him up at zero and he just get whooped. But then he lines up in B gap and he's great. But they just take him out of B gap after he's great. Weird little class we dealing with. Weird, weird little class that we dealing with. Um, but besides that, I just started watching some of the other, and I'm just they, they just. We watching Boy A Mafe today on the uh, Patreon. Let me minimize this here. Uh, the f- who we cleaning up with? We're cleaning up with Boy A Mafe. We're revisiting Travon Walker and Nick Benito. That's what we're gonna clean up. Clean up today. We're gonna. We're gonna. Um, that's gonna finish the the edge cleanup or whatever. Then after that, we're gonna move on to uh, wide receivers, but. I was just kind of let down by a lot of what I was seeing from from these, you know, slim <laughs> stand up outside linebacker types that, you know, that's good versus the run but can't pass rush. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Uh, Sam Williams from Ole Miss, yeah, he's another one of them. He's he's another one. He's an, he's another one of them cats that's you know that that's raw that has promise but surprisingly kind of cool versus the run. Surprisingly kind of cool versus the run, but. You know, I, uh, if 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 you're gonna draft any of these guys high to any capacity, you want them to to at least bring some pass rush value to you. But it seems like their pass rush ability stops at running down the middle of people. I hate to see defensive ends run down the middle of people. I hate to see slim defensive ends run down the middle of people. This shit's weird. You should be doing everything but running down the middle of people. People think I hate Jermaine Johnson, but I just I saw a bunch of plays of him at the Senior Bowl in particular, running down the middle. Of, I I hate it. I hate it. Let me cut my music back on while I take a sip of this water. Just hold on. Let me just just cut the music on while. Hey y'all, let's just vibe for like three seconds while we just take a sip of water together as a family. Shout out to Alex in the chat box. 
this is his time of year where he's a full-blown member of the family. He's an Eagles fan. He has to sit through my cowboy nonsense. But it's draft season, so he's a full-blown member of the family now. So, shouts out to brother Alex. Um, he disagrees with my Jermaine Johnson run down the middle of people take. I think, um, I think his film, there's a lot more than just running down the middle of people. It wasn't perfect, but you know, a lot of his big senior bowl plays or just, you know, senior bowl practice plays or whatever. Like one of his, like some of his plays that have been highlighted was him running down the middle of people. And I kind of wanted to see him work on his other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you know. You know, <laughs> listen, I'm not looking for reasons to dislike Jermaine Johnson. Ain't none of these people my cousin. I, I'm nobody's agent. You know what I'm saying? I don't really benefit in, you know, disliking a player or another. So if I found some Jermaine Johnson tape I like, then we can book it. I changed my mind on like one player last year. I forgot. But I made a big deal out of it. It was somebody I didn't like, but I saw some different film. And I changed my mind on him. I don't know. Forgot who that player might be. But hey, if y'all show me some film of Jermaine Johnson working on like just doing multiple, you know what I mean? And like more than once, you know what I mean? I don't don't just show me the one highlight of him trying to work on that swim back inside. Like I just see him running down the middle of people a bunch, you know. Which is fine at the senior bowl if you want to run down the middle of people fine, but <laughs> but I also saw no pass rush plan. Um I saw no pass rush plan on his film. And I saw not very bendy on his film. And I saw he's more prone to beat up on the the little kids, but when he runs into the big guys you know, on his film. You know what I'm saying? You know. Vach can be wrong, though, man. I look, I don't want nobody to think that Vach is incapable of being wrong. We're going to put this shit on repeat. This is crazy. This is this is a really good talking track for me. I like to talk, talk over this. Um... There, there was even this uh, this dude in one of my comments, and I gotta learn how to just ignore the shit out of people, but I can't because I love y'all too much. There was this uh, dude in my in my in my uh, comments. Let me pause and take my glasses off. When I'm not gonna take the glasses off when I say, but he was like, "But watch, I would listen to you, but you've been wrong. I can't have faith in you, Vach. You've been wrong." Sure. <laughs> I've been wrong. But Drake also says they they scream my failures and they whisper my accomplishments. You know what I mean? I just want y'all to just, whether I'm right or wrong, I want y'all to look at Vach's opinion and be like, okay, Vach really feels this way. I don't want y'all to walk into this thing thinking that, oh, Vach is trying to push some type of narrative or just Vach is trying to be different. Oh, everybody else loves Jermaine Johnson. Vach is trying to be different. Hey, Jermaine Johnson. No, that's not the case. Because I could easily hate on somebody that's easier to hate on. You know? If I was trying to pull that move, I'd hate Aiden Hutchinson because everybody hate Aiden Hutchinson. You know what I mean? I could do that. But I don't. Because I'm not phony. Music back on. Because I'm not phony. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, I'm not super happy with this defensive end class. Not super happy about him at all. I think if you don't get one of the first few... Um, I just think you just kind of just stuck with what you got, man. I just think you stuck with what you got. Uh, my step cousin Jay Lombardi says Philly chose Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. They did. They did, sir. Let me take. Let me just take another sip of water while we listen to music. Just give me two seconds. There we go. So, um, who said this? I really want to say this. I really want to reread what they said. Who said that? Ah, the coldest. Yo, apparently there's a kid whose name is really the coldest, and his middle name is supposed to be like to ever do it, but his last name like Green or some shit. <laughs> I don't even know if that's his, that's his last name for real. But 
the brother in the chat box, Dakota, was like, I got to get an ad blocker to cut these ads out. I work for ads right now, man. I can't be phony and, and go, go to somebody else's website and just hate on their ads while I go to work and make money off my ads. That's weird. I don't want to hate on nobody. Um, So this is what we about to do, right? PFF, we're going to do some reaction content, relatively, because, uh, you know. We always take things like this with a with a with a grain of salt or whatever. Let me get that out the way. There, that was smooth. Um, PFF did a 2022 NFL draft position rankings, right? They got quarterback, running back, you know what I'm saying? All the positions or whatever. It's like a top ten. So we're not gonna go into this list taking their information, cause y'all know I hate that shit. <laughs> I, 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 I hate taking other, other people's information or even regurgitating somebody. It, yeah, I, I hate it. I hate it. But what I'm going to use this for is to get a vibe for what they're saying. We can at least hear them out, right? We can at least hear them out. We can get a vibe for what they're saying. We can agree or disagree with their rankings. Y'all know that's 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 pretty fun, okay? Agreeing and disagreeing with rankings. And I need to make a list of people I need to watch, all right? So that's what we're going to do, especially since we're going uh, for the wide receiver position in particular next, right? Especially since we're going for the wide receiver position. Let me see. Shouts out to 2i Aisha. Shouts out. So listen, let's get this started, man. We ain't doing nothing else. We're here as a family. We're here as a family. Let's go. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Also, too. Also, too. Let me just mute my music real quick. Hold on. Just, just, just also, too. Like, I know it's some, like, cowboy fans here, and y'all may not have been tuned in, like, uh, yesterday or something like that. But if you weren't tuned in, just real fast. So yeah, we got round table. Um, <clears throat> we got round table uh, tomorrow. So um, if you're a Cowboy fan in particular, you want to um, tune into the round table, come on through. If you're uh, Alex the Eagles fan, but you just kind of like how we boogie and interact with each other, you just, I don't know, you're an Eagles fan, you just kind of want to learn some Cowboy information, you can feel free to tune in also. So just putting that out there. man. I think the round tables is like, you know, a pretty big deal man you know i love the doom um you know people be like we should do it every week i think if we did it every week y'all wouldn't watch it man i think i think spreading it, spreading it around a little bit you know what i'm saying that brings out the it brings out the uh you know it brings out the value of of each show you understand all right so let me just, so let me just ask the uh chat box right now you know because just to get a a relative idea um what fans are we rep like what teams are we representing here chat like just kind of let me know i know eagles fans are here i know there are plenty cowboy fans here that are uh spilled over from cowboy season but um what what fans are uh what fan bases are in the chat box here just to have a general idea of uh how many of these uh you know groupings we should be looking at or not looking at y'all just let me know uh, Eagles fan here, but I enjoy the content. Still got love for them boys. Hey man, let them know, man. Hey man, you can, you can. <laughs> hey man, you know what I mean? You know, ain't nothing wrong with going. You know, you know, I don't do it personally. I don't have two teams, but you know, Raiders, Green Bay, Green Bay may need a quarterback. Uh, Bears don't need a quarterback. Packers, Jags, Jags don't need a quarterback. Falcons could be in the quarterback market, so we might just skip quarterback here. Um, Titans, I don't think they're looking for a quarterback. Bills are good. Uh, Lions. I don't think they're gonna take quarterback early. Lions may go quarterback late. Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. Dallas, Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. Dallas. Rams. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, we we probably not even gonna be looking at quarterback. So let me just go ahead and click off quarterback there. 
<laughs> just go ahead, quick, click off, just click off a quarterback. There, we ain't, we ain't doing nothing with that. Um, in terms of running back, I'm also kind of out on running back. Just, just as a as a Cowboys fan, I'm probably gonna watch running back late when I watch the quarterbacks because I am gonna watch quarterbacks. I'm, I'm gonna watch as many guys as I can. Um, I'm gonna watch as as many guys as I can, but I just think running back is a position that I just naturally watch late. Along with you know, quarterback and like corner and shit like that. So uh, I'm familiar with Kenneth Walker. You know, I, I know of the Iowa State kid. From, you know, see, see, you know, it's just I, I'm I'm looking at these names. Like, let's just talk for a second, bro. Let's just before we get into this, let's just talk for a second, bro. Let's just go. Back to let's just let's just talk for a second, bro. The league. Hold on. I got to cut on some let me talk to y'all music for a sec. Also, the phone line's open. The, the, the number's at the bottom right of the screen here. So, the league has really made running back evaluation a weird, weird place. Right? But it seems like every single year we're getting these day three to undrafted guys that do really, really well. But every year there's a new running back getting paid. Now, as a Cowboy fan, I know this in particular. I know this in particular. Boy, you pay him and they just look different, don't they? <laughs> David Johnson, Todd Gurley, Ezekiel. They get their little monies. They just look a little different. Al, uh, what's his name? Well, Alvin going to look different because Drew gone, of course, but. DeMarco <laughs> went to the Eagles and lost his little mind. You know what I'm saying? Who else? Christian, uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey can't stay healthy. You know? But you get these new guys, right? The fucking 49ers will invest a draft pick in the Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon's like a second round pick or something. Second round pick? Third, maybe? Day two guy? They invested in that motherfucker, and they, they ended up going with Elijah Mitchell. And Elijah Mitchell had a damn good year, because that's just what happens. with the, That's just it what happens. Don, Don DeMarco, my bad. Uh, Don DeMarco. There y'all go. Um, so I just, it's just every time, like, you know, my team did it already. So it ain't, you know, it ain't really nothing, you know, I can do at this point. There's no, no angry fan mail I can write. You know, being mad at Ezekiel Elliott, we like we're not saving money. We just kind of stuck with him, right? But why aren't these other teams looking at this at the same example of these top running backs being worse than bro? Cam Anchor, Cam Akers tore his Achilles in the season, and that little motherfucker came back with more burst, <laughs> with more burst than the paid guys. Crazy. It makes no sense to to pay big money to running backs. Somebody's gonna be like, "Well, what about Austin Eckler?" That's fine, but for every Austin Eckler, it's ten running backs on the other side that look bad after they got their money. So let's just do this real fast, uh, Rico Montana. Let's do this real fast. I want to ask Rico, but I'm going to ask the rest of the chat. Then we're going to get back to these position rankings, right? What the fuck do you do with Saquon? It almost make you not even want to draft that much. You, you, you almost don't even want to draft running back high no more. Boy, I'd be pissed off. I'd be mad at my Bro. Number two overall. Who was on the board that year? <laughs> what year was that? 2018? 19? 2019 NFL. Because, like, Cowboy fans be doing this dumb ass shit too. Right? They got to go back. Oh, Vosh, we suck at draft. We. Taco Charles. Like, that was years ago, bro. Saquon was. Uh, what year was that? What year was that? What year was that, bro? Uh, it wasn't 19 That was Kyler and Bosa Was it 18 Was it 18 uh, 
Okay, so it's 2018. Cool, cool, cool. Let's pull this shit up then. Let's pull this shit up. What up, fam? Enjoying the show. Appreciate you, brother Juan. Baker Mayfield was first. Ugh. Saquon, ugh. Sam Darnold, ugh. Bradley Chubb was on the board and you went Saquon Bark. Josh Allen was on the board. Now, to be fair, I still <laughs> I still stand on my early Josh Allen hate, but he got better, but there you go. Make a Vita Vea. And you know what? That's another draft strategy I was talking about on the homie Skywalker Steel page earlier today. When you the number two overall pick, you kind of got to draft who, who the draft say you got to draft. That's the sucky part about all this. So one of y'all going to be on top of the board and a player that you might not like going to be there, but you got to take the player that you might not like because that's just what the board says to take. If you don't like Kayvon Thibodeau, you might be stuck with him. But if you draft in at 26, you can take who you want. You understand? Like the Cowboys drafted in 19, we ended up with Van Der Esch. But you could have taken a wide receiver and DJ Moore. You, and, and this ain't me hindsight or nothing like that. You could have took Calvin really. You could have took Hayden Hurt. Like you just have options at the back of the board. You can't take Vita Vea number two overall. You can, and you'll be smarter. You can take, I mean, you, you can't take Quinn Nelson number two overall. You can, it'll be smarter, but you can't do it. You understand? You could have took Deron Paint, but but so you just gotta ask yourself, man, like why like why be pigeonholed into a spot like this? Giants fan here, like the content special draft. Appreciate you, man. How you feel about Saquon? What's the vibes with him? I don't I don't I don't I don't think you can trade him. You can't trade Saquon. That's what sucks about the back of the draft, bro. That's what's like if you get a running back, like if you uh you know, like if it's Dalvin Cook or something, Dalvin Cook went later, but he ends up being the top back, then, you know, that, that makes me feel a little better. I still don't want to pay him, but that made me feel a little better. But you took this motherfucker, number two. That sucks, man. <laughs> I be mad that a motherfucker died. Hold on, let me show y'all, man. Hold on, let's go to React. Let me show y'all this, man. This was your first round that year. This was your first round, bro. Raiders fans bother the shit out of me about, about uh, Colton Miller. They acting like it didn't take time for Colton Miller to be competent, but he still can't run block. Raiders fans be bothered the shit out of me, man. And look, I, I, I try to be cordial with Raiders fans, but they keep bothering me about this Colton Miller shit, so I got to defend myself. I got to defend myself. Boy, Terrell Edmonds at 28 was a head scratch at the time, boy. Boy, Rashad Penny at 27 was a head scratch at the time, boy. Jacksonville had the 29th overall pick, Lamar Jackson on the board. They went Taven Bryant. What are you doing? Damn, boy. I just... What the second round look like? We weren't even supposed to be doing this. <laughs> we weren't even supposed to be doing this. Man, the Colts went crazy this draft. Hold on, bro. Colts went. Hell yeah. Ooh, Quinn Darius Braden. Come on, man. I remember Teray. I remember Teray. How the fuck they got all these picks, man? I, I, I don't know. We ain't got to be doing all this. We ain't got to be doing all this, man. We ain't got to be doing all this. Um, yeah. Come on. Get my mock draft music on. All right, let's get into it. Well, let's get back into it. Um, yeah, so like I said, man, I'm, I'm not looking at running backs, man. <laughs> I'm not looking at running backs. I'm going to come back to receiver. I need to take notes on now. Tight ends. Uh, my own fan base, right? Cowboy fans bothering shit out of me last year. Vach, we could take Jalen Wordemeyer in the first round. I'm like, man, don't, don't you dare. <laughs> like, relax, man. But yeah, we're not fucking with tight ends. Offensive tackles. Let's start here. Actually, let's continue to go through this list. We can use interior O line, interior D line, edge, linebackers, corners. All right, we cool. I think I think that's good for the most part. Let's start with offensive line. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. 
I'm sick. I love this beat, man. Let's just listen to this beat. Let's just drink some water. The phone number's on the screen. Well, it's not no more. It was on the screen, but y'all know the damn number. <laughs> let's let's take one last water break before we get to this analysis. Please, please, please. All right. Um, this is very interesting. Uh, right there. Charles Cross is their number one guy. Now we we we've talked about this, right? When we um, talk about these offensive, let's see this freestyle. One hundred percent. When we when we talk about these offensive linemen and how it's going to fall in this draft, there is not going to be one clear consensus, man. Um, there, there, there's not going to be just one guy that everybody likes. It just depends on what traits you're looking for. Charles Cross has the technical ability, but he he's not the physical player that these uh, next four guys, well, three guys, because pinning stiff, he stiff as a board, but. Um, if you like technique, Charles will be first. Ikeen is the exploder guy, but he lacks technique. Evan Neal probably got, you know, the, the highest floor, lowest ceiling out of all these guys. Well coached Alabama dude, but what you what you get is what you get from him, right? Combination of both. Trevor Penny, they got Zion Johnson at tackle. I don't think that's gonna be a case. Well, that's gonna be the case. So I need to watch Abraham. What we doing? We just listen. We doing? We just listen. Took the trash. I did the dishes. Then, man, I'm innocent. I'm sick of this. Uh, Abraham Lucas, Washington State. Have y'all seen him? Because at some point, I'm going to have to get into like the next tier of tackles or whatever. But the problem I have with tackles in particular is. If they're not like one of the top handful of guys or whatever, they typically they typically don't work out. You know what I mean? And that sounds bad coming from O line dude or draft analysis dude, but look at where the league is. Like the league and offensive line as a whole is terrible. You know what I mean? So we get offensive linemen every year, but why aren't they good? Well, I think because there's a there's a coaching problem in the league or whatnot. I think there's just a problem with um, you know, Coaches get in the college or whatever. Coaches get fired so quick that they don't really have time to, you know, train people. Like, we're just trying to get in, get out, teach you quick techniques, get, get rid of the ball quick, move on. Like, Charles Cross is in Mike Leach system, so all they do is throw the ball 50 times a game. So, is he going to be a guy that you feel comfortable with run blocking and shit? Like, it's just, we got we to gotta have conversations like that. Um, Tyler Smith from Tulsa is another guy. Right. In case y'all are uh, coming in new or you uh, haven't gotten the rundown on what the show is going to be, PFF has done um, a. I mean, do you call these articles? But they've done some work, and they have uh, player rankings or whatever. Now we're not looking at at PFS player rankings and turn it into our player rankings, but we're just uh, we're taking this and we're comparing it to how we feel about the players that we watched already. But then I'm I'm just me personally. I'm just gonna write down a couple names I, I need to watch film on. Um, Dan Falile. Uh, I think I've slowly almost come around on Dane Felile. Not because he's a big guy, but um, it's just that when you look at Dane Felile being so big, you want him to be like a super imposing strong dude, but he's not that. You just got to treat Dane Felile like he's a Jonah Williams type. <laughs> but he's 6'10", 300 mad pounds, you know what I mean? Um, Eagles know how to draft linemen. Will ball amount to anything? We're gonna find out this this year, this camp. Uh, very true. Scheme is important for O line development for sure. Daniel Felile, I've I've called him uh, J Tufile plenty of times, and I and I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <clears throat> I don't think he's a guard because I don't think he bends very well. I don't I don't think he bends at the knee very well. Like if you seen um. You seen how like how like Kenya Green bent at the knees? That's just cause it's like different movements inside, man. Like Felile is not a bender; he's a leaner. Like he leans forward. Um, that's just better for him being outside. But I just you know know how I feel. They got Linderbaum as their number one interior guy. Uh, 
Bernard Ramey from Central Michigan is the tight end that gained 100 pounds and now he's 300 pounds and now they just call him offensive lineman. Okay, here we go. Cool. Two years ago, Ramey was playing tight end and now he has a legitimate shot to be a first round pick. He's earned the second highest grade in offense. I hate y'all and y'all offensive line grades. Shove it. Kenyon Green should be number one. <laughs> Tyler should be number two. Zion should be three. Then y'all can do whatever y'all want from there. I got Bernard Raymond film pulled up, so I'm going to double and triple check just to make sure my opinion is correct. But I kind of watched Bernard Raymond one time and I was like, this dude, the X tight end, he's going to test very well athletically and somebody's going to overdraft him. But as long as it ain't your team, you ain't got to worry about it. He ain't got to worry about it. Tech Xanum has the best tight end. They had him like as the, their, their fifth guy. I don't know. Um, Jamari Salyer, definitely seen his name before. Darren Kennard, they had him playing tackle at the senior bowl. He looked bad, but uh, he had some solid, you know, some solid guard snaps. Cole Strange is another good player, another uh, senior bowl guy. I watch these guys and I watch them in uh, April, early April. I'll be knocking those guys out. Interior defensive lineman, where we at? They got Devontae White as the first guy. Now, you know, and, and, and this is interesting also, right? Devontae Wyatt, in terms of draft value, he belongs as the first guy because he's a three tech with a nasty first step. He gives you pass rush ability, cool. But if you think about what you're going to ask Devontae Wyatt to do, then compare that to what you're going to ask Jordan Davis to do. Jordan Davis is going to do his job better than Devontae Wyatt. Wyatt is going to do more jobs. And probably and pass rush is the more important job, of course. Jordan Davis as a run defender is probably one of the best run defenders we're going to see. So what do you draft for? Do you draft for the value, the position value, or do you draft for the better player? I think Jordan Davis is a better player. But Devontae Wyatt is a three-tech with a damn good first step. You know what I'm saying? With pass rush value. So <sighs> We watched Travis Jones yesterday. Travis Jones is another dude that's big as hell. But, you know, and, you know, jo like Jordan Davis would just skew your perception on, like, what big guys are. You know, like, like you'll watch Travis Jones thinking he's small, but he's 330 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Do the dishes, do the dishes, I think Logan Hall is going to end up being like a 3-4 defensive end. I don't think he's 260, though. He look he, he looks bigger than that, but that's because he's like a longer dude. I don't know. So I think some team is going to force him to play like even front, like 4-3 like defensive end, but I don't think that's going to be, you know, good for, for, Logan's, uh, for Logan's production. I think Logan Hall is the type of guy – um, to where he's gonna be one of those I'm quick inside guys, you know what I mean? Like if you if you put him outside, the level of quickness is gonna change for you, right? So Logan Logan Hall outside is not quick. Like he's not a very bendy bendy dude outside. Like he's, he he could be a physical guy outside. You know, you need him versus the run. He could be that dude. But you put Logan Hall inside with them long arms. Let that dude let that dude work, man. Let that dude boogie. Now, Rico, let me ask you this. Do you feel like Felile is a guard because he's 390 pounds? Or like, 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 like what indication? And 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 not just for you, Rico. I just I just see you saying it, but like for, for anybody that thinks um that thinks um Felile is a guard. Like, like what like like what's y'all reasonings for him being a guard? And don't say cause he's 300. <laughs> you better not say cause he's three because he's not physical like that. Like he's not physic as physical as I want my guard to be. He just big. He's just a big ass dude, you know. Um, Neil Farrell, seen his name, seen his name. I've seen all these guys' names. Fedarian, we watched Fedarian yesterday. Um, but he's gonna end up being one of those guys that transitions be between one tech and three tech. I like some of his three tech film, but you know who 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 am I? We definitely need to watch Perion Winfrey. We'll cut some of the wide receiver film with D tackle stuff. So hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll watch Matthew Butler too, because I've heard his name a bunch. I've seen it, I've seen it a few times. We'll write that down. Matthew Butler. 
Tennessee. These are our D tackles, ladies and gentlemen. Also, too, if if y'all want to see this film as I'm watching it, to be fair, I'm not gonna watch all the film with y'all, but um, I watch a good bit of it on uh, Patreon, patreoncom slash No Bar. Devin Lloyd, Nicole Dean, sure, sure, sure. Brain, awesome one. I got his, I got his film um, pulled, but you know, we'll get there at some point. Blue to Chanel from Wisconsin, sure, sure, sure. Christian Harris from Alabama, sure, sure, sure. Wisconsin got two kids. I, boy, look, linebacker so boring to me. <laughs> like linebacker's boring to me unless the linebacker's special. You know what I mean? So I can watch Nicole Dean and be like, mm. Mm. But just regular running hit linebackers? Nah, that bothered me. Let me tell you what else I hate too, though, right? I was just about to say. So we got. Man, look, bro. Like all, like all, all these kids are fantastic. I'm sure they come from good homes. They got good, good teaching, good parenting, good coaching, all that. I'm sure both the Wisconsin kids, you know, they do their homework. They come to class on time. I'm sure they're not disrespectful. They yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am. No, I'm sure. But I need all the Georgia kids on this list, bro. Because effectively, like this is a top ten linebackers, but this is, this is also like from their top 100. We're not gonna sit up here and play. Like, we don't need all the Georgia kids on this shit. All, it's like four of their ass. They all just run around, just hitting pieces. Four of them. And look, man, like sometimes they'll let Dean catch a breath. And they'll pull out, uh, they'll put out, pull out, uh, Quay Walker. Channing getting, there's another one too. <laughs> and the muffins, they all just blend in with each other. They just running around. They just running around. My word, bro. Bless them dudes, man. I'll take any one of them. Give me all the damn Georgia linebackers, bro. Let me put that back up. Troy Anderson. It's crazy. I've been seeing like this new wave of respect and hype for Troy Anderson, but I was like, all right, let me go find some. Um, let me go find some. Um, some Montana State film. Can't find it. <laughs> Can't find it. The Luminati has a has a uh, has a has an incredible grip on Montana State film. I even went to YouTube and I was like, hey man, let me go to YouTube and see if I can find something. Couldn't find it. Let me just cut this up while I take a water break. Y'all give me two seconds, man. Y'all just hold on. Fun stuff, fun stuff, fun stuff, fun stuff. Shouts out to the homie Jack Rose, man. Just send me a send me a text and an email, man. Apparently, some things are in the works. Apparently, there's some some work some work that's afoot. But we'll cross that road whenever we get there. Um, let's get into woo, woo, woo. Okay, let's get into edge guys, man. Let's get into edge guys. Let's get into edge guys. Let's get in the edge, guys, man. Aiden Hudson, number one. Well, that's correct. He's also the number one player on PFS Big Board. That's interesting enough. That's a solid start. Kayvon Thibodeau is the second defensive end before Thorn the Big Board. Okay, okay. Okay. Carl Loftus is the third defensive end, but he's ninth on the big board. I think I've made my feelings on Carl Loftus pretty clear. You know, it's interesting, man. Uh, Dane Brugler is still, and and I respect Dane Brugler. You know, I, I respect, you know, he, he, he does the work or whatever. But Trevon Walker, Trevon Walker is a top 10 guy on his board, like top 10 on his big board. I think that's interesting. Because that's, that's, I watched Trevon. We gonna, you know, we're gonna rewatch him on the Patreon just to make sure everything's good to go with him. But man, I just I just watched Trevon Walker and I just see a guy that I have many questions about. Many questions about. I watched David Ajabo and I just have less questions, you know? I'm not saying that Ojabo's like clearly the better player. I mean, everybody can have their opinion, but 
I just have questions about Ojabo. I mean, I have more questions about Trevon Walker than Ojabo. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna definitely clean them up. I got some film pulled. We're gonna uh, clean them up for sure. Uh, Jermaine Johnson as the sixth defensive end. Sure, I don't I don't hate it. Cause look, once we get into the rest of these guys, I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to do with them. Joey Nichols wanted to tell us two times that Jermaine Johnson is uh. It's his edge number two. All right, hey, c- congratulations, man. Hey, if you put in the work, I ain't mad at you. Relatively. <laughs> uh, Kingsland Gabari is the 35th overall guy. I got a problem with it. DeMarvin Leal is the 43rd overall guy. Got a problem with it. Drake Jackson is the 44th overall guy. Got a problem with it. Arnold Ibidike is the 46th overall guy. Got a problem with it. I think them characters going to be in day three somewhere, bro. I really think them characters gonna be in day three somewhere, man. I don't know. I don't know. Derek Stingley, you know, we we've been hearing about Derek Stingley since his elite freshman campaign, but you know, LSU starts to lose some games, foot injury happens, and you know what I'm saying. Things happen, you know what I mean? Some people that I'm very close to said that they like Sauce Gardner a little better than uh Derek Stingley. I'm going to save my opinion for when it's time to deep dive into um, into uh, cornerback play, but I think the interviews are going to be very important for Stingley. So when we have combine time and they get everybody together and they ask those weird-ass questions, all right, well, if you had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and the, and the crust was cut off, would you cuss your mother out or punch your brother? Like, yo, sir. I like my crust cut off my sandwiches. Why you gotta ask me weird shit like this? Why you know what I mean? But then, yeah, but there's Brother Sauce. Trent, Trent McDuffie from Washington. Andrew Brew from Clemson. Raj McCurry from, uh, Ar- Raj McCurry could play. Raj, I, I, I think he's like short arm guy, but Raj McCurry can play. Let that dude go be your nickel guy if you like long guys or something. I don't know. Um, and they got a bunch of dudes that are ranked behind some of the edges that I don't like. So, boy. But we're going to get into cornerbacks thoroughly at some point. Apparently, this is a better edge class than um, – than ha- and I want to click off this quickly, but y'all know how safeties go, man. Y'all know how safeties go. You know, we may roll up and say, hey, man, this, this safety, he's a top – Kyle Hamilton's number two guy on PFS board right now. You know what I mean? But y'all know how safeties work, man. You know, it could be a – uh, you know, you know Malik Hooker is one of the best prospects we've prospects we've seen come out in a long time, and he was a guy that went into the teens. You know, Derwin James, late teen guy, uh, Darnell Savage, twenties. You know, that one year while the safeties came out, everybody one and one. They were all day two guys. You know what I'm saying? So their number two safety, Kair Elam, who's 31st on their board. Even in the explanation, they say Elam is a long physical corner who shuts down the SEC's best. It's safeties, right? <laughs> We're looking at safeties, correct? Man. We're looking at safeties. All right, y'all got it, man. PFF, y'all. Y'all got it. Uh, Lewis Sign. Jaquan Brisker, got to watch him. Dax, got to watch him. Uh, I ain't watching nobody named JoJo Doman, man. I ain't watching nobody whose name rhymes like that. I'm not watching him. <laughs> I'm not watching him. And here are my wide receivers. We're going to really uh, grind those down um, starting Thursday. Might be might be cool. Might be an appropriate time. Um, to really grind down receivers It's hard to find USC film In general so I'm going to have to look on YouTube also to kind of get a good Get a good feel for it but Both the Ohio State kids Garrett Wilson Chris Olave both them dudes can play Both the uh, both the Bama kids Jameson and Mechie Mechie not even on the list huh Mechie just not on the list Not on their top 10 list That is interesting Justin Ross from Clemson George Pickens from Georgia Jalen Tolbert South Alabama. I, I know Jahan Dawson, Sky Moore, and those guys. Jalen, uh, Traylon Burks. Traylon's supposed to be the next Debo, allegedly. No Mechie. Interesting. 
interesting interesting and i'm gonna write all this down man so we can know uh so we can know who to look for as we're you know doing our our, our wide receiver works or whatever but uh, it's interesting man i don't know if I don't like have, having guys missing, you know what I mean? Especially guys I know. Especially guys I know. Hey, man, y'all got five minutes to call in and talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. If not, we shutting down the phones and we going to Q&A on the, uh, <laughs> and we doing Q&A from the chat box. If you want to. If you want to. Because I tell you what, this email that I just got and this text message I just got was very important. It's very important. And there is a piece of me that will stop this entire live stream just to read this email and look at this text message. So, we, hey, I'm leaving this up to y'all. If y'all want a boogie, the number's up under Marcellus Wallace. If not, we're going to chill in the chat box for a little bit and we're going to go home. Because I almost make it. I almost didn't make it to this one. I almost didn't make it to this one. But it's fine. We're here. Chat box, if you have any questions, you ask them now before I get into this email that I'm going to read. Okay, 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 okay. Here's what we're taking turn of hunting like that. We will always stop. <laughs> Skywalker still know exactly what the fuck I'm doing. Shots out the wheel still, man. He know exactly what I'm reading, man. But he's but he's my friend in real life, so I can tell him. <laughs> I can tell him what I'm reading in real life. We got Lane on the phone. What up, Lane? As I continue to read this email, as you tell me what you gotta tell me or whatever, but <laughs> what's, hey, what's up, bro? What's good, my guy? What you got for the show? Uh, I ain't talked to you since uh, last draft season. Remember oh. what I said about uh, Mac Daddy Jones? I'm sure. I remember exactly what you said about Mac Jones. 100%. That's definitely a no, but all right. <laughs> I lied. Hey, look, man. I, 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 I tried to meet you halfway, <laughs> man, but you, but you, but you saw it through my nonsense. My right. bad. Tell us what you said about uh, Mac Jones. Give us a reminder about what you said. Hank Hill is going to be Kirk Cousins. Solid NFL starter. Mm -hmm. Not a good ceiling. Okay. He's going to get it done, though. Okay. That's, that was about it. Uh, I <laughs> hey, man, wait a minute, dog. Time out, man. I thought you was going to get into this long, I told you so speech. But, yeah. I know, I know <laughs> Patriots, man. I, I ain't going to die on uh, Mac Jones Hill. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair you see enough. him with his shirt off? He ain't, he ain't nothing to. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got yeah, you. Uh, all right. So, what do you think about uh, the linebackers in this class? I missed. Uh, I missed your breakdown in this stream, but I'm gonna go back and watch it. But. Um, linebackers. Uh, they're they're boring for me to watch unless they're really good. You know. So currently. So well, see he, what well, he's he's really good, you know what I mean. So the right. the thing about Nicobe, thing about Lloyd, I'll give you this 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 linebacker take as I set this email down. Right, the, here is one of my uh -huh. linebacker takes. What I think um, is is going on with the league. I think the league is going to constantly evolve every everything, every group, whatever. I think what linebacker growth is going to be is it's going to be a lot more. I used to play safety guy. Um, and they're going to end up being your will linebackers. But then what we're going to do is we're going to find these super athletic edge dudes that can run around a little bit, and they're going to be to where they used to be Sam linebackers. They're probably going to be a lot more mics for you because like, because what we do – well, uh, Parsons, sure, one hundred percent. What we do is that we look at what's working in the league and we try to emulate that. You know, so last year we'll look at a guy or two years ago, whenever it was Isaiah Simmons coming out of Clemson. We'll look at him and be like, "Man, I want a linebacker that can cover in the nickel and play safety sometimes, 
And, you know, before you know it, you get a guy like Jabril Cox. You get guys like Divine Diablo. You understand? But now we got this Michael Parsons character, this 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 linebacker that can run around a little bit and pass rush. I think now the league is going to move forward to figure out which of my linebackers can uh, run from can run sideline to sideline but still give me value in the pass rush game. That's where I think we're at. So um, it's still early for me to give you a nuanced linebacker take, but – uh, in terms of you know how the you know how the league is going, I will give you that linebacker opinion. So what? Uh, more hybrid, more hybrid players. Sure, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So I think uh, Simmons coming out of Clemson. I think he took a a non-zero amount of snaps at edge too. Because I mean, he's six four, two hundred twenty. You might might as well blow up some eighteen year old dude from uh, middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Playing tackle, <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure, one hundred percent. I feel you, brother Dean. I mean, brother Lane. Shit, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I said Dean because we talking about Nicobe Dean. My bad, brother Lane. Um, that's all you got for the show. All right, I ain't him. That that's all you got. That's, I pre- appreciate you, then, brother Lane. Hey, Amen. But look, man, don't don't wait till the end of draft season and next draft season to call back, man. Like you know, like come come back home and come back home and talk to me, man. Appreciate you, Lane. So this email got super important. So what I'm about to do. The conference has been locked. I'm going to lock the phones. And these last three callers, we're going to get to y'all. And then I'm going to go read, uh, read this email. So, uh, But we will get to these callers. Let's let's see what y'all got for the show. 323, what's up? Who this? Yo, it's A-Rod, 323. What up, Rod? What up, A-Rod? You, uh, you going to retire? Oh, you, you you A-Rod from the chat box. You uh, Who you like? You like... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You like uh, Thibodeau or something? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just talking about the Cowboys mark draft right now. No, nah, man, hold on, uh, man. Hold on, I, man. I did a mark draft man, man, wait a minute, though. Wait a minute, a Rod. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who you are because I know who you are, but there's a reason why I remember you. Like, we disagreed on something, and you ain't and you oh, ain't yeah, called yeah. in that one time because I'd be wanting people to call in, but you oh, ain't yeah. called in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was commenting from work and shit. Um, I was trying to get on the phone, but I was at work. Yeah, Kayvon, I think Kayvon is going to uh, – depends on what team, of course, he gets fucking um, drafted to. I think he's going to be one of the best players in the draft. I mean, since his fresh – okay, th- people are overreacting on Aiden Hutchinson, but he, he's a senior, and his past three years, he, he's accumulated zero sacks. Until his until his senior year, he had 14 sacks. That's just something to me. That's something that I – that I gotta uh, point out that he K-Von got better, had, that he improved, <laughs> that he improved. What are no, you saying? No, no, it's just that Kayvon since his freshman season, he had nine sacks, and then he had he he's just an overall better uh, um, player to me than Hutchinson. I what mean, about the context though? Like, I, I, like, I guess, what I if I? I think I think he's quicker. Okay, but like, but like, but like, okay, but like, but like. Watch this though. Watch this though. What if I add? What if I add some additional context to this conversation? And I go, well, so what about those sacks where like Kayvon kind of ran free, or just Kayvon kind of just, you know, whatever, whatever? He and he, and, huh? He's quicker than everybody. He's just quicker than everybody. I said he ran free like they didn't block him. Like he just kind of like it ain't like he just smoked somebody on the pass rush rep. Like he just like ran free and he made a play, okay. opposed to Aiden Hutchinson his using his hands and and exploding somebody and like. They didn't get the same. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, I hear you. I, I just I just seen some games where where Aiden. I think I think he 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 commits too much to to a, a, a pass rush like a bull rush, and he'll kind of get off balance and he'll get and he'll get pushed around. I ain't, I ain't never seen that. There, <laughs> I ain't never seen that. What what was you watching? What what uh what low light tape was you watching of Aiden Hutchinson get pushed around like that? I know. I I I watched that Georgia game. And I think they all, the whole the whole team played kind of uh kind of down. Mm-hmm. I didn't think they were confident um, going into the Georgia game. You mean to tell me you gonna the, look at? You mean to tell me to 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 craft what you like about Thibodeau? You gonna go back to his freshman year? But yo, but the notion that you gonna craft oh, no, what you dislike about gross. Aiden Hutchinson is one game versus Georgia. What are you doing, sir? What are you doing? No. He didn't have he didn't have no production his first three years his first three years. What about his last year? He got better. He improved. What are you doing? I'd rather I'd rather have a player on my team that's 
his physical attributes is mm -hmm. off the charts, and he's been producing since his his freshman year. Then over a player that I might have to put some work in. You know what that's I have like to get it out of him. You know what that's like that's like saying you would rather Baker Mayfield because he's been the same dude he's been since his rookie year over Josh Allen who sucked his rookie year but got better towards the end of his toward the, toward the end of his run. Oh no, we already see the sample size though from Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen. We already see that. We don't see this yet. We don't see this eight, uh, Aiden Hutchinson, Kayvon, uh yet until they get in the league and it's been over past maybe two years. Hey, Rod, I hate you, but go ahead and tell us about uh, <laughs> and the chat box eating you up. But go ahead, though. It, maybe, uh, maybe it's because from L.A. and, and Kayvon's from L.A. And, and they ain't but just say you biased. What, just say you biased when you first answer the phone, nah. man. <laughs> you ain't got to. No, I ain't no, I ain't biased, though. It's because I really think Kayvon's going to be. You uh, just said you're from uh, L.A., man. What are you doing? You at work still? You can't concentrate? I'm from, no, I am from my, no, I am from L.A. Kayvon's from L.A. I just think a lot of people. Come on, Gabas. Before the season started. <laughs> Don't come on, Vach me. Don't come on, Vach me, sir. Don't do that. <laughs> My bad, man. Okay. Talk, talk to okay, us okay. about That's uh over. Talk to us about this That's mock draft, man. I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you alone, okay. man. Talk talk to us about this mock draft, man. Okay, this mock, this mock. Okay, I think Ken Young's gonna be gone by twenty four. Okay. Dean's gonna be gone by twenty four. Mm -hmm. Lloyd's gonna be gone by twenty four. I mean, who else is on our draft? I mean, who else is on our board at 24? If Dean Lloyd and Kenyon are gone, Jameson? I don't think I don't like Jameson at 24. If all those guys are I, gone, I think, then somebody's gonna gonna be there for you. Somebody will will fall to you. So I just encourage you to just uh, you know uh, pick up some more names. You know, like Trevor Penning could be there. I, uh, yeah, that's that's who that's who I that's who I'm most likely gonna be. For sure, uh, who I took at first uh, first pick. For sure. Second, second, I think I think I watched Kylie Gordon out of out of uh, Kylie Gordon or George Pickens the second round. Okay. That's who we need to get. Corner. I mean, Anthony Brown this season is a lot of it, it, it was a lot of the reasons why we lost in games, or had some points put up on us. So we can't keep doing that. Hey man, okay. you ain't gotta be you ain't gotta be careful what you say because you feel like I'm gonna retort it, man. Go ahead, get your point out, man. I ain't doing oh. nothing to you, man. Go <laughs> get your point out. Hell no. I'm, I'm I'm telling you the players that we need. Uh, Darian Beavers. Darian Beavers. Uh, we need to stop the run. Okay. We need to stop the run. This kid, it can go can can go sideline to sideline, physical as ever. Six four, former safety. You need to watch. You need to watch his, his, uh, out of Cincinnati. You need to watch his his film. Third, third round. Okay. Neil then. Farrell can do everything Jordan Davis can do. Okay, then A Rod, we gon' we and we not getting down. We know we and that's a fourth rounder. Okay, okay. I'm just telling you, watch. Okay. You need to watch these players and. I, I, Every year I watch all the players, A Rod. So so trust, we gonna we gonna get there at some point. Appreciate you, man. Uh we're gonna get to this email in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and hang up on you, A Rod. But uh, but A Rod, you uh you uh platinum now. So next time you call in, I'm gonna know it's you. I'm gonna bother the shit out you next time. Uh then we got uh nine four nine. What's up? Who this? What's up, Vox? What's good? Um, I was wondering what are your thoughts on this um quarterback class, because I'm a Steelers fan. Mm. And there's there's one guy I like really like who no one's really talking about. Who's that guy? Sam Howell. Uh, I think I think Sam Howell is going to be better than what uh, than what people are giving him credit for. I think the weird thing about Howell is that he should have just came out last year, um, you know. But he figured that he would you know it, go back for another year and try to win a, with. Uh, isn't he a true junior though? I thought he was a true junior this year. I mean, whatever he was, but I feel like he was. Uh, I felt like we was, we, was, we was talking about Sam Howell last year. I could be no, no, because he's a he's a uh, he's a uh, senior bowl guy, huh? Sam Howell. Well, he's a senior bowl guy, but um, don't they let like juniors in now? I'm not sure. I feel like not we. I, I I feel like we was we was talking about, and and then look, it it may not have been. 
draft talk, but it was just, oh, well, Sam Howell's going to be good next year. It, it was talk like that at least. So I just yeah, yeah. I just remember us talking about Sam Howell, but he didn't live up to, you know, that thing that we was talking about or whatever. So, I mean, in terms, he didn't live up to, like, the overall production. Like, like we thought that North Carolina was going to be one of those teams or whatever. But I guess when you lose uh, three receivers, two running backs, couple other guys i mean i'd imagine shit's gonna gonna look a little different for you but um in terms of sam howe i like the player you know what i mean i like the player you know i just think that you know he he, he lost a bunch of talent and he had to adjust to it he probably should have went to one of them covid camps and just sat out a year but uh you know but but yeah if you in like if you want to get him in the in the late rounds i mean I have no clue yeah. what, what's going to happen with quarterback this year. I don't know if teams like these guys enough to move up to go get them because there's no clear one guy. Or I don't know if teams are just going to let them just kind of fall to their pick or if these guys are going to be second-round picks. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where teams take quarterbacks. But a team like my team that doesn't need a quarterback, that's going to be very valuable for us getting good players down the line. So I love it. The thing about Howell, though, is like, He's one of the only guys in this class that said, like, he's, like, actually, he's really accurate. He has a strong arm, and he's mobile. Like, when you look at, um, like, we look at someone like Ritter or someone, he's, you could say he's mobile. He has, like, a decent arm, I'd say, but his accuracy is kind of all over the place. Okay. And also his, like, I'd say his offense, like, really held him back this year. Sure. It, it was, like, all RPOs. And when you look at, like, those, those third down like must pass must pass situations. He actually like he showed what like he's capable of, and also his like receivers this year were terrible. Like his best receiver was like a five eight slot receiver named Josh Downs, sure. which is like just not reliable. But um, sure, I don't know. No one's really talking about him. I just hope he I hope he falls. I don't think anybody's talking about him because the. The draft Illuminati would much rather talk about the exciting stories, and I just don't think quarterback this year is an exciting story. But that's not to say that you can't find a quarterback that can play for you. So, I like what you were saying, man, in terms of the uh, of the system thing. But you got to be careful with the system, you know, because you could be like, oh, that big arm quarterback is being limited by this RPO system. Well, you could get Paxton Lynch, but you could get Justin Herbert. You know what I mean? So you know you just gotta, uh, you know, yeah, you, that's, that's you, true. you know, you just really gotta just grind the film and figure that out. But um, hey, man, appreciate you. This was a this was a pretty good call. I ain't trying to rush you off the phone, but I gotta go read this email. So I'm gonna go lay on my couch right there while Meg Stag is on the, on the TV just um existing and i'm going to uh get back to y'all you know what i'm saying will we do patreon today i don't know depends on how this email goes you know what i mean and um i'll update y'all when it's time to update y'all till then i appreciate you follow me on twitter v-o-c-h-l-o-n-b-a-r-d-i don't forget to subscribe to the patreon patreon.com slash vash lombard i'm about to go check out this work y'all hold it down for the doski woes and the peace